Welcome to 100% Effective Training's Introduction to Process Mapping for Lean Six Sigma. Over the last 15 years, we've conducted countless process mapping sessions in numerous industries in numerous countries around the world. This introduction will give you a taster of our online process mapping course, which explains in detail process mapping and our experiences and tips and techniques for improving. Process mapping is a system for capturing the steps in a process to the level of detail that you require. This can be to either explain a process in detail or to identify where the potential problems are. Different people call process mapping different things, and there are different names even for different process mapping formats. Some people call it detailed process mapping or swim lanes. Some people call them SIPOC. Some people call it IDEF modeling. Others call it flow charting. Others call it activity diagram. Whatever you call it, it's all the same thing, identifying each and every step in a process so that you can either explain the process or identify where there are problems. Process mapping is important because it's done in virtually every single Lean Six Sigma project to understand what are the various steps within the process, either to explain it to people or to identify where the problems are. Process mapping also helps us to identify the waste in the process, the delays, the transport, the inspection, and generally where the problems are, which we can identify as we move through the process mapping process. Process mapping also identifies where we have potential handover issues from one department to another or from one person to another, and hence it identifies where we may have communication issues. It also helps us identify all the people that are involved in the process, which means we can then work out who should be in our project team or who we should consult with to understand the process in some detail or to tell us where the problems are. It also shows us how complex the process is and sometimes just putting the process map on the wall and showing it to people, they will say, my goodness, no wonder we make so many mistakes. Look at how complex our process is. It's also a great way of communicating what happens in a process to a whole team. Sometimes people have never seen the process and don't understand where they fit into that process. So process mapping is vital when we're trying to understand a process or identify where there are any problems. There are different levels of process mapping. At the highest level we would do something called the SIPOC, which identifies on one page all the key process steps, inputs, outputs, suppliers and customers. So it helps us identify where we potentially got problems at a more strategic level. The next level we would do something called activity diagramming where we would just put the major key steps of an activity down against the person who does it. The most detailed part is called detailed process mapping or swim lanes. In this we would identify each and every step whether it waste or non-value added activities as well as value added activities so that we can identify where there are real problems and show in detail what happens. As you can see in this slide, this explains how a SIPOC works. In the middle we have each and every one of the process steps, normally between three and nine steps to capture all of a process. Then for each step what we look at are all the inputs that make that step happen and who supplies those inputs to make that step happen. We then go to the other side of the chart where we look at the outputs from each step and the customers of each one of those outputs. As you can see on one page we can capture exactly what happens in a process. Detailed process mapping, as you can see, has a lot of unique symbols that are used to represent different things. Activities are normally green kind of circles, uh, transport's a blue arrow, delays are a yellow kind of D, uh, and so on. Each one is there to represent something happening in the process. We can then see who did it on the left hand side. We can see the actors that are involved, which department's doing what, which person's doing what. And then we can see each activity that they do. By doing a process, a detailed process map, we can then identify many things including durations, who did it, why they did it, what roles they had, what measures of performance they've got, as well as identifying each and every part of waste within that process. When it comes to drawing process maps and facilitating process maps, it's kind of an art. People normally get various things wrong when they're trying to do it, the most common one being the level of detail to put into their process map. Many people either put in too much detail and it takes too long and it's too complex or they put in so little detail that it actually doesn't show you where the problems and the issues are. So the art of process mapping is knowing what level of detail to go to. 
other problems we see when people try to do process mapping sessions is they're actually not very good as facilitators and therefore find it hard to control the group or get the right information from a group or identify the various steps in the process. You therefore have to know what you need to map in the first place. You need to make sure that you map the correct items in your process and many people get confused as to what they're mapping, whether it's the information flow or whether it's the physical flow of a part going through a process. Confusing them makes the process map very difficult to follow, therefore we try and separate them out. The other key problem we normally see when doing process mapping is not generally mapping the truth, mapping exactly what happens. We ask managers or as managers we assume we know what happens in the process. The key people are the people who actually do the process themselves, who we should go and talk to in order to really understand what happens and understand the truth and where the real problems are. Lastly, we normally have problems where we try and use the wrong symbols or the wrong type of map and we get hung up on that and therefore we can't identify the right process to, to use or we don't capture problems as we're going through the process. Hopefully that's explained some of the common problems and what process mapping is, why it's important and has shown you a couple of the process mapping techniques. It's just a taster really of our online process mapping course. If you would like to learn more about the different types of process map maps, how to draw them, what problems people have, how to avoid falling into those problems and how to make the most of process mapping then please sign up for our online process mapping course. I'm sure it will help you in the future. If you'd like some consultancy or assistance with process mapping, we can help there. Or if you'd just like to discuss process mapping or Lean Six Sigma in any way, then please give us a ring or get in touch. Thank you very much.